Are the two receivers that came to Texas A&M via the portal the most important offensive additions of the offseason? Let's talk about it. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked on Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked on Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. Ladies and gentlemen, an article came out from Athlon discussing it took every SEC team and their most important offensive transfer and defensive transfer. And Texas A&M's, I agree with what they said. I don't disagree. I agree on defense, uh, and we're going to have an argument on offense. So we'll start with defense because it's more straightforward. They have Nick Scorton. No question. Nick Scorton is the most important transfer. Well, we'll start with the offense. because So they have Cyrus Allen and Jabri Barber as the two most important offensive transfers. Now, I'm not saying that I totally disagree. I don't disagree. I mean, let's go through your offensive transfer portal options. You got tight end Trey Watson, lineman Dorian Hinton, um, lineman Derek Graham. Running back EJ Smith, offensive lineman um, Armage Reed Adams. You got uh, Jabri Barber, as previously mentioned. You got uh, Cyrus Allen, as previously mentioned. Mentioned Garrett Miller, the tight end from Purdue, and that's about it. So, my only pushback to this, I, I think the three names that come to mind, three names that are on, on this list that I think you could argue are the more important additions than Jabri Barber and Cyrus Allen. Now, where I stand, Jabri Barber is the guy. I, I think Cyrus Allen, they have like slash Cyrus Allen slash Jabri Barber. I am a lot more excited about Jabri Barber than I am Cyrus Allen. Um, that's just my opinion on him. I think Cyrus Allen can help this team. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying that. I just think, Debris Barber gets me more fired up than Cyrus Allen at this current point. But the names that stick out to me, there's three. It's Derek Graham, the lineman from Troy. Trey Watson, the tight end. And then, of course, um, EJ Smith from Stanford, the running back. Y'all all know how I feel about EJ Smith. I think EJ Smith is a player who could help this Texas A&M offense more than many are giving him credit to do. I think he's a good football player. I think he is, uh, you know, once again, I've said, I've told this story before, but I talked to Spencer McLaughlin, our host of the uh, Locked On College Football Podcast, and he used to cover a lot of Pac-12, and he told me, he's like, Andrew, I, I really like EJ Smith. I don't think Stanford was using him to the best of his ability, and I think in a new system – you could find a way to for him to be explosive and him to be a good player. You know, he proved he can run the football. He can catch passes out of the backfield. He's a guy who I think is going to be able to do a lot for Texas A&M. Then you talk about Trey Watson. I like Garrett Miller, too. It's kind of the same thing as Derrick Barber and Cyrus Allen. I like Garrett Miller. I like Trey Watson a little bit more. I think Trey Watson is going to be the guy that you see show up in the stat sheet more. I think he's going to catch more passes than Garrett Miller. I could be wrong about that. That's just based on the tape I've watched. That's the vibe I get from these two players. So Trey Watson, and, and as we talked about on yesterday's show, tight end is a room. It's a position that Coach Colin Klein loves. He loves to utilize the tight ends. He is a coach who uses tight ends a ton. He loves throwing the tight ends. He loves using tight ends to block. It's a position that he really does love. So, 
you know, you're going to have to have some guys, especially with Donovan Green still coming back from that ACL tear. We don't know how, you know, we don't know what his status is, how long could it be for him. And so I think Trey Watson's going to get a lot of run with this team. And I think he's a, a ball player. He's got the size. He's got the frame. He's got everything you need to be a, a really good tight end in the SEC. As is Garrett Miller. I just think Garrett, now Garrett Miller's done it at the Power 5 level. I do just have this opinion that, Trey Watson has more of the athletic, uh, just based on the tape. I just I like his athletic upside more than than Garrett Miller's. But Garrett Miller's been a great player, and I think he can block at a high level too. They both can block. They both can catch passes. But I'm taking Miller to block and Watson to catch to catch passes if I had the choice there. And then Derek Graham, you know, he's the one played tackle last year at Troy. His for you know a pretty good Troy team. His PFF grade was really really good he is i mean the numbers don't lie on pff the pff grades love Derek graham they think he's a great player and i agree with them i'm mean, watching the film on Derek graham you're gonna get no argument from me on how talented he is how good of a player he is i think that we're gonna we're getting ready to read some quotes from trey zoo and some of the other uh, players and coach elko and talk about those and and, and one thing that Trey Zoon continued to hammer down was we don't know who the starting offensive line is going to be yet. Um, so could Derek Graham work his way in? You know, the PFF grade for uh, for the pass protection last year was incredible. Um, and I think he's a guy who who has the frame. He's about 6'4", 315 pounds. He's got that frame to play offensive line in the SEC. So I'm anxious to see if he's able to get out on the field. So that's offense. So I don't disagree with, with Athlon saying that Cyrus Allen and Derby are the two most important transfers, but I would push back that I think there's a lot of guys you could have had here, and I wouldn't have been upset if you had either, any of those three names. Then on defense, as I said a moment ago, it was Nick Scorton. The only names that I have here, and, and listen, this one's different because it's Nick Scorton and there is no debate to it. There's not even a conversation about it. But – I think that next level, if you, you know, uh, Nick Scorton, he doesn't count, right? And you have to pick, uh, pick you know, most impactful, most important transfer for the de defense that's not Scorton. I have a handful of names. I've got Will Lee. I've got Des Ricks. I've got whoever wins the job between Alex Howard and Scooby Williams, assuming one of those two wins the job. And then I also have – um. Cassius Howell, the edge rusher from Bowling Green, who, like Nick Scorton, put up a lot of numbers. I think that Des Ricks and Will Lee, I really do think you're going to see them both out there. Uh, we heard you know, Coach Bateman, uh, the defense coordinator, talk yesterday about, hey, he feels pretty good about this corner room. He thinks there's a chance it could end up being a strength, a strength of this defense, which, you know, if I would have told y'all that at one point, I think knowing the discussions we've had here at Locked on Aggies, y'all every day would agree that y'all would have told me I'm crazy if if I told you, hey, I think there's a chance that um I think there's a chance that this cornerback room could be a strength of this team. Would have never thought that there, that'd be a possibility. So I think Des Ricks and Will Lee, the upside there, especially for Des Ricks, the upside is through the roof. Through the roof. So those are the guys there. I think Cassius Howell is going to have more of a role than we think. I just, I think he's going to get after the quarter. And I'm not, he's not going to have Nick Scorton numbers. Um, but I do think that he might have four or five sacks. I think he could do it. I really do. Because I think Scorton could have double digit sacks. I really believe that. But I think there's a chance Howell could have four or five sacks. I, you know, I mean, you got to think about it. When you're last year, Texas AM had 42, and that was number one in the SEC. You get five from Howell. You're in, you know, that, that helps. That's going to help. It's like, well, five sacks, that, that, that's going to go a long way to uh, being crowned SEC sack champion back to back season. So those are the players on defense. Once again, like it, it's Nick Scorton's on, on a level of his own. But then I think there's a handful of players under, you know, after Nick Scorton that could, you know, if you, if you take Nick Scorton away, I think it's a whole new level. And I think on that level, there's four or five guys who you can argue could be important. I think Scooby Williams and Alex Howard both have a chance to start, be the everyday other linebacker next to Terry and York. Um, I'm excited about to see who wins that job. That's going to be a fun, fun race. Maybe a freshman sneaks in. 
I'm excited to see what happens in the linebacker room. But I do think one of those two, whichever one ends up starting, assuming they do, will be one of the most valuable you know, players along this defense. So if y'all have a transfer that you think should be mentioned on this list for the most important on offense and defense that wasn't named, let me know in the comments. If you think it's one of the names that wasn't on the wasn't um, in there, but I uh, talk, talked about, let me know that in the comments too. I'm curious your y'all's thoughts. We heard from Trey Zune, Terry and York, and Mike Elko. We got some interesting quotes as we learn more and more about the 2024 Texas A&M football team. We're gonna have that conversation coming up right here. Unlocked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. The Iowa State Cyclones can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves entering the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country. They have a date with Illinois coming up this Thursday in the Sweet 16 in what should be a really exciting matchup. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com today. Also want to tell you about our friends over at Better Together. Bracket already busted. Tired of the same old daily fantasy grind where you make a roster, cross your fingers to hope for the best, or losing on the last leg of your pick em entry. Introducing Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent and you can play with your friends, not against them. Pick more or less on a real-time player stat strategize with your partner to boost your odds and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement. I love better together. Me and my roommates, my, 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 my best friends, we have started doing this together on better together. And cause we always talk about what we're going to make. What are we betting on today? And now we're doing it together on better together. And it is a ton of fun. You have got to go check out better together, gamble with all your friends, bet on sports with all your friends, Ton of fun. Go check it out. Download Better Together from uh, now from the App Store and sign up using promo code Locked On for a free five dollar entry into any NCAA basketball contest. Remember the code Locked On because winning alone is fun, but it is better together. We got some quotes, ladies and gentlemen, some interesting ones. I always love getting to hear from the players and staff during spring practice, during the season, you know, ton of fun things to go over. And, you know, the, the first quote I want to talk about from Coach Alco has to do with the, with the upcoming spring game. And this really gets me excited. So let's read this quote and talk about why I think not only is this exciting, but this is important. So Coach had this to say. He said on uh, about the April 20th maroon-white game, we'll do a draft, and it'll be a true maroon-white game, a true football game. We'll play it out. The spring, this, the spring game is for the players and the fans. From the start of January, these kids put in, a, in an awful lot of work, so you want to give them the opportunity to go out and play the game they love in a format they're, com they're comfortable in. You know, I am not a fan of the – ones versus twos, twos versus th no, no, thank you. One or you know, sometimes we'll see the one offense go against the two defense, and then the one, the two, the one offense go against the two, the the one defense go against the two offense. Excuse me. Um, I don't like that. Let's strap it up and let's see what we got. Let's go. Let's go draft players. You know, you, you're gonna have some of your good players here, some of your good players here. Spread them out. I love this format. We are going to learn a ton, a ton about Texas A&M's football team in this game. And, and you got injuries. You got different things going on. And I know it's not everything. We're not hitting quarterbacks. Quarterbacks aren't running. There's a lot, you know, there still. But I will tell you this. It's just this format. You get to see players make plays. The teams aren't overpowered. I am really excited about this. I think this is something that not a lot of people are going to talk about or care about, 
but I think this is going to make the Maroon and White game an event. Once again, that's what it's for. It's, it's for it's for it's for y'all. It's for us. It's for the fans. It's it's an event. Get to see this team. Get to see these players. Get to see this coaching staff, and see what they can do. I mean that that's the whole point of this. So I think that you're going to see a fun game. We're going to see a lot of different players make plays, and I can't wait to see that. I am I was excited for the Maroon and White game, regardless. Now I am double excited. This is going to be a ton of fun. I can't wait for that. And this makes it even better. Um, so Coach Elko says that Gabriel Brunlow Dindy has not been participating in spring practice so far, but he added that he does not believe uh, Brunlow Dindy will be out for the entirety of spring practice. So, you know, hopefully this isn't any kind of long term concern. Um, he then went, Coach Elko went on to say, if you look at our plan to win, the number two piece of that is to win on special teams, and we have a formula that we give to the guys about how to win on special teams and the impact you can have on the game and special teams. As the head coach, the only meeting I sit in on every single day is a special teams meeting. You know, I'll tell you this. Some folks don't care about special teams. I get it. It's not fun. You do, I mean, there's a reason I'm not sitting here talking about place kicking every day at Locked on Aggies. But – it matters. It matters. I mean, I'm not trying to throw Randy Bond under the bus right now, but he missed some kicks that hurt. You know, we saw different things. We saw all special teams. We saw big punt returns We uh, from Anaya Smith. We've seen lots of positive plays and negative plays on special teams from the Aggies last season. You want to have a clean special teams unit. You don't want to muff punts, and you don't want to – uh, have field goal attempts and extra points blocked. Those things lose football games. On special teams, you want to make winning plays, not losing plays. And I really like, I mean, there. Are, let's be honest, there are some coaches out there that, that aren't going to care about special teams. They just aren't. Uh, you know, sweep it under the rug. They don't care about it. They just, whatever, someone figure it out, deal with it. Who's Someone go return that punt, who cares? I love that Coach Elko is, is really taking, you know, Making taking the priority on the special teams, making sure this unit is 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 good. It you know it, it gives some young guys opportunities to get on the field. I think special teams is just a huge role. It plays a huge role in the game of football and plays a huge role in winning football games. So, you know, that's my opinion on it. Um, on this, I think that's a great quote from Coach Elko, and I think it's gonna really you know help this football team win games. Um. Coach Elko had this to say about linebacker Taryn York. He has a he had a really good offseason. What you saw last year was a true freshman in the SEC. He has made the natural development and growth with his body this season that you'll see an even better version of him as we set out this fall. An even better version of Taryn York is a, a very terrifying thing for opposing SEC teams. I don't want any, any part of that. It sounds like um, he's becoming a leader. Taryn York is, and that's great to hear. Someone's got to be a leader. Would love for it to be Taryn York because he's going to be a player that's in the NFL someday soon and going to have a strong Texas A&M career. Now we hear from Taryn York, and we continue to hear a common theme. He says, Coach Tommy Moffitt was a great addition to our staff, if not the most important addition to our staff. The discipline and the standard that he has set has really thrust our program in the right direction. I mean, I can sit here and brag on Tommy Moffat all day, but it sounds better coming from Taryn York than it does from me, of course. And listen to that quote. That is a powerful quote, ladies and gentlemen, that really, really matters. I mean, I just think hearing it from a coach, great. Hearing it from Coach Elko, Coach Bateman, Coach Klein, whatever. I love that. I do love that. Hearing it from a player is incredible. I love hearing that from Terry York. So, and it's been a common theme. Um, and then Terry York went on to say, Mike Elko has, has always been um, high on me since 10th grade. Coach Elko has a great relationship with my trainer. I've always had great respect for Coach Elko since the day I met him. I love hearing that because it has to do with, you know, your um, relationships, recruiting, the things we've discussed before. You know, Taryn York has done a good job creating those um, – or excuse me, Coach Elko has done a great job creating those relationships, which will help on the recruiting trail. So I love hearing that. 
Trey Zune says he loves being healthy. It feels good uh, practicing when nothing hurts is really fun. That's that's funny because you know he's been banged up pretty much his whole career. Uh, but um, I feel like I have the opportunity to get a lot better this offseason, this spring. Good for him. Good for Trey Zune. He's feeling good, feeling strong. Going to need him to have a strong season. He also went on to say, um, I like Coach Adam Cushing. He's a great teacher. He knows the game. He really goes in depth. He doesn't go over it quickly. He'll go over it until everyone is in the know. Love that. He's thorough. That will help players know what's going on on the field. Lastly, Trey Zune says um, Texas A&M's offensive scheme is not terribly different from the previous one, which is a conversation for another day. So bookmark that quote. We're going to talk about a little bit about everybody's favorite um, everybody's favorite topic, and that is Terry Bussey. We'll talk about that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV, whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV lets you dive into all of the game analysis highlights and more to keep up to date on the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, game, gaming, traveling, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. So before we call it a day here, ladies and gentlemen, hope everybody's having a great Thursday. But I want to talk about none other than the GOAT, Terry Buzzy. Of course, he's not going to be here, you know, for spring. He's coming in late. Um, but I want to talk one more time about, and I, and this is going to be a whole episode when we get deeper into this, or a whole segment to start the show when we get deeper into, um, getting ready when he's on campus, we're, we're seeing what he's looking like getting ready for the season, but how much is he going to be used on offense? That to me is a very interesting topic ahead of the 2024 season, you know, uh, and I, I, every time I even bring up the name Terry Bussey, I'm going to discuss how I think he might be the best football player to have ever walked the earth or ever will walk the earth. Um, but, you know, all kidding aside, which hopefully I'm not kidding about that, and that's true because there's a chance, but, um, you know, he can do what Travis Hunter does at Colorado. He can play everywhere on the football field. Will he be used on offense is the question. and. We heard Coach Elko answer this question, and he kind of was like, well, you know, we'd like eh, we'd like to use a maybe. Some, eh, eh. So he kind of gave like a maybe. And, you know, I'll tell you, I think that corner is where Terry Bussey is going to make his money when it comes to the NFL. And as I always say, Terry Bussey is an NFL player. There's no conversation debate to that. That's, that is going to happen. Um, so I think that corner is going to be his spot in the NFL. Now, he's going to return kicks. And I think uh, whether it's kickoffs, punts, whatever, he's going to help in the return game. And I think he's going to be really good at that, really dynamic. Um, so that's going to be something he, he's going to do at AM, and he'll likely do um, at the next level too. He's just – you put the football in his hands, whether it's an interception, a reception, a punt return, whatever – you give that kid a football in space, good luck catching him. Good luck not getting your ankles broken because that's just what he does. Um, so my opinion, I think Terry Bussey will have some offensive plays. He's on the field. Now, I do not think he'll be on the field for every single snap. None of that. But I do think you're going to see him out there 
for a handful of snaps every game. I think he is a really um, talented offensive player. And same thing, it's just you, whether it's a go route or whatever it is, whether it's something close to the line of scrimmage, you're going to see Terry Bussey use his uh, quickness, use his athleticism, his ability to make people miss. He's going to use that in the open field with the football in his hands if they can get the football to him, whether it's an end around, a screen, a something. You know, They're going to get the football to him in space, and hopefully he's going to have some massive plays because of that. He has the ability, anytime he touches the football, he has the ability to break away. That's just the type of player he is. So, you know, I'm a believer. Hey, get the football in his hands as much as humanly possible. Get it in his hands a couple times a game, let him return kicks, and then let him, you know, do his thing on uh, playing corner. I'm telling you one thing. When he gets an interception, that thing's going to the house more times than not because, once again, how shifty he is. Offensive players won't be able to tackle him. Um, so Terry Bussey is going to be a star. You know, it, we'll, we're going to learn a lot more about you know what his role is going to look like. I think when he does get to campus, but I'm just so excited for the future. Uh, wherever he's playing, he's going to play it at a very high level. So his role, I think, even as a freshman, I know Coach Elko is trying to get us to manage expectations. You know, hey, he's still a freshman, and he is a freshman, but this kid's going to be a star, and I really think he could be a star early into his Texas A&M career. That is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Thank you all so much for tuning in every single day. Really appreciate it. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. If you're listening on a podcast platform, leave a five-star review. All of those things help the show, help it grow. Appreciate it a ton. Everybody have a great rest of your Thursday, and we will see you tomorrow.